I hope you really enjoyed uh, the nice uh, dinner last night and uh, some good tries uh, of the beer. I think that was, I, I liked it at least. Um, just to introduce myself, um, I'm uh, Moritz Güller. I'm uh, here at DTU, a PhD student with uh, with Thomas Howard. And um, yeah, I will just uh, just guide here through uh, through the first half of the day. So uh, if you look at your your program, uh, we'll start with. Uh, uh, with a card session, so computer-aided robust design uh, is becoming bigger and bigger in the digital age. And then back-to-back uh, -back we will have uh, the poster presentations, but I will come to the exact format uh, just in a little bit. First of all, I'd like to, uh, to welcome uh, NNE, PharmaPlan, and uh, have a warm uh, thank you to them. They are sponsoring the first session here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, Torben Rasmussen. He is a senior consultant at NNE Pharma Plan. They are um, an engineering and consultancy company uh, advising uh, pharma and biotech company t companies worldwide. And yeah, here Thank to you. you. Thank you very much. Yes. I think we have. have and Thank you. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about obtaining rapid results using robust design. And let's just see if I can. Yeah, so, of course, everybody wants robust design. That's why we're here. Um, and we want this because we want to minimize our costs. We want to mi minimize our yield issues. Um, and we all know, also know that in order to have robust design, we need to be able to evaluate if we have it, and if needed, to optimize it. Uh, in our experience, however, uh, many companies have difficulties getting started using robust design, and they have difficulties getting started in a way where they can see the results rapidly. So we have found that one path leading to, uh, to robust design with rapid results uh, would be to involve the right people. This probably goes without saying, but we've also experienced that very often this is not the case. So you fail to involve marketing, R&D, production, and QA in one sitting in order to have or build uh, a solid uh, house of, of quality. So you fail to have the customer requirements transformed into uh, product specifications, transformed into component specifications, and then ultimately transformed into process specifications. That's not the topic of today. The topic of today is how to use some easy to access and flexible software to actually get there, to get these rapid results. Because these easy to access software will allow you to have fast startup, and a fast startup is going to enable you to have fast results. Fast results is going to please management, so you're going to have those on board. Uh, you need something that is easily adaptable. And this could be a good idea because it would enable you to use the same tool for multiple purposes. You wouldn't have to have something that is geometric. You could also analyze processes or what have you. Um, you need to build a realistic model because the realistic model enables you to differentiate, for instance, between short-term and long-term variation, OQ, PQ demands. Um, having a software that enables you to set enforceable input assumptions, and this is really critical because you want to be able to uh, reliably predict the variation and yield issues you might have um, from your incoming components. Uh, you want to be able to feed back data from your pilot production back into the analysis model so that you will be able to learn from your findings, but also be able to set your specifications more realistically so that it actually reflects what your, your production facility is, is capable of. Now, this is the topic of today. Um, so first up, easy to access and flexible software we chose a Vatran, short for variance transmission. I'm sure that a lot of you know it. Vatran is a small software that allows you to set up a basic I.O. system. You have some inputs, you have some outputs, you link them through a transfer function. Uh, very importantly, it allows you to make some realistic assumptions about the variation, not just choosing the distribution, but also making some additional assumptions about how this distribution can move. Um, and this is important for having a realistic uh, evaluation of your output performance. And in addition, Vastran allows you to do some simple optimization of your inputs in order to make your design more robust. So let's uh, 
five easy steps to, to get started with Vartran. First up, you uh, list the, uh, the output. In this case, we have a medical pump, so the output could be flow rate. You uh, enter the specifications, so for a pump in, uh, and flow rate, you might measure things in milliliters per minute, so you could set the upper and lower spec on this. You list the critical inputs, and it sounds easy on a, on a PowerPoint, but uh, this might be a whole exercise in itself. You, you have to do DOE or involve the right people, uh, get everybody together to figure out what actually characterizes my, my output. Uh, so once you have the list of critical inputs, you need to link them to the output. So you need a transfer function. And in Vatran, this has to be analytical. So you need to be able to create a formula that, uh, that links your inputs to your output. So this might not uh, be easy either. So you might need to do design experiments or at least getting some bright minds together in order to create this transfer function. Then you come to the critical part by defining the capability assumptions for your inputs in order to make this realistic assumption or getting the real realistic uh, estimate of your uh, defect rate on your output, which is what Vatran then provides. It uh, provides two outputs actually. It's gonna give you the ideal case on target Every input aligned perfectly with the assumptions uh, in, uh, in the, uh, the specifications. So this is, in this case, for the flow rate, you're going to have a 300 ppm defect rate. But it also gives you the, uh, last one causes the worst case, which would correspond to the worst batch on the worst day uh, combination of your inputs, which in this case has almost 11% defect rate. So this is a great tool for spotting uh, potential risks uh, in, your, uh, in your product. Uh, so let's just try this on a client case instead. So here we had a client who had some uh, injection molded parts needed to come together with some rubber parts that needed to weld together to create a sealed compartment within the device. Um, and because you had a lot of incoming components, you had a, a a lot of rubber uh, parts, and you had machines assembling things and actually making the weld, there was the possibility that you might compromise this sealed compartment within the device. And they wanted to make this more robust, or at least figure out if they could make it more robust to, to all these uh, sources of variation. So we went through the, the five steps using Vatran. We figured out the output, uh, listed all the inputs. In this case, it was quite easy to list the inputs because it was just a geometric consideration and you could pr project it onto 2D. So um, we would uh, then establish the transfer function, which was also quite easy, actually. I think it took about an hour to, to get there. Um, and then we would move on to setting specification for the, for the inputs. And what you would usually do if this was starting from scratch, you would simply set low cost tolerances. You would ask your production, what are you capable of? What specifications can we be within? And you would apply this. But this was actually a running pilot line. So we could go out, get data, uh, do the analysis, uh, and then put in some more realistic assumptions about the input variation. Um, once this was done, you want to look at finding more optimum targets for your input variables um, to see if you can maybe minimize uh, the variation uh, simply by, for instance, moving a target. And then you would evaluate the capability, and if everything was okay, well, then basically you're done. In our case, we were done. Simply by doing a target movement, we actually made it there, but had this not been the case, you would want to identify the most critical input parameters to, uh, to see which one is contributing the most to the output variation. You would look at optimizing tolerances and maybe it's not as much hitting tolerances with a hammer, maybe more redistributing tolerances, taking uh, tolerance from one input variable that might have a very high capability and giving it to an input variable that needed more. And then you would close the loop, look again at optimizing targets, evaluate your capability, and then hopefully, eventually, you're gonna be done. Um, so the results from this, well, the initial uh, estimate of a uh, worst batch defect rate was actually as high as 89% for this specific product. Um, so of course, there was a problem needed to be fixed. Um, and as I mentioned, simply by moving the target for one of the, the input variables, in this case, actually the wel welding position of this weld between the uh, injection molded part and the rubber part, uh, by moving this, uh, and the designer had put it 
in what he thought was the most obvious place on, in the middle of the uh, injection molded part. But by moving it to the middle of the overlap between the injection molded part and the uh, rubber part, you would move the entire distribution. And this might seem really obvious just by looking at it here. Um, but unless you, you gather the data, figure out how this worst batch defect rate look, you have no idea how much to move it, and you have no idea if you moved it enough. So doing the analysis, figuring out what happens if we do this, are we then in the clear, is critical to gain uh, rapid results. So in this case, we actually finished uh, the, the, the problem uh, in two weeks, of which one week was spent just getting the data, uh, doing the analysis, and feeding it back into uh, to Vartran. But we also have to acknowledge that Vartran might not be the right software for everything. Um, so very often we find that we turn to Excel, simple uh, software, or maybe not simple, but at least the software that everybody has. I mean, everybody have Excel, everybody knows how to use it. You might even have in your company people who are extremely good at using Excel, so you can make some very advanced uh, VBA coding, for instance. And uh, Excel has the, uh, the great advantages that it's so flexible. I mean, you can design almost anything you want. You can make the GUI the way you want. You can put in figures, uh, which Vartran does not allow you to. So in this case, we created a um, customized Excel tool for tolerance analysis. And the client would like it to look a bit like Vartran. So he would like the same uh, figures and same outputs. But he wanted to be able to take the entire thing and copy paste it into a PowerPoint presentation. He wanted to convey the entire message in one slide. Um, and he also, as I mentioned, he wanted all of these uh, different uh, things that he could get from Rathstone. So he wanted the graphical output. He wanted the sensitivity analysis. He wanted uh, the, the hardcore data. On top of this, he actually also wanted a Monte Carlo simulation being done. And he wanted to be able to see the specification he has set for his uh, product um, on the same sheet. Then, of course, there's a lot of things going on behind this. You have some input variables you define, but, but we, he wanted things to, to look as much as Vatran as possible, but still having something he could customize. Um, and using Excel also gives you some unique possibilities. As I mentioned in the beginning, you have the ability to administer short-term and long-term variation differently. So you might have input variables that are highly dependent on time, for instance. So running in production, you might have something that is not the same in your OQ, which will be different in running production or in your PQ. Uh, and you might have some inputs that are not, I mean, insensitive to process variation. So you want to be able to differentiate the demands in different stages for each of your inputs. So Excel is a great tool for administering this. Uh, it also allows you to customize the way you sum up things. Vatran is very strict in the way it does it, whereas in, in Excel you can pretty much define how you want things to be, uh, to be mixed together, both in terms of the inputs, but also how you actually add up the, the contributions in the end. And of course, like Vatran, it allows you to analyze multiple different problems, so you don't have to settle with something that is a uh, geometrical uh, problem. You can also look at mass balance, in this case, and the API production line. Um, you could look at mechanical properties, optimization of a spring. The only requirement is that you can actually set up the formula linking the inputs to the outputs. So having something that is adaptable to your needs uh, allows you to solve multiple problems. And more importantly, it allows you to make some realistic assumptions about your input variation that allows you to reliably predict the product failure rate. And this is important because what happens in R&D? R&D makes some assumptions about how your inputs will behave. They, in this case, they are designing a pin that needs to fit in a hole, and they are, in their mindset, they are thinking about a central process with a CP of two, which is gonna allow you to have a PPM a defect rate for the clearance of these two components. This gets translated into specifications for your parts. Very often, these are just upper and lower specs. And um, if production complies with the assumptions made by R&D, so everything is spot on target, you have a CP of two, CPK of two, you're gonna have this sub-PPM defect rate that you were really looking, that you were looking for. So here, the common language between R&D and production are the specifications. But what happens if production does not comply with the assumptions about a centered process, a CP of two? 
they might still have a CPK of two, but the pin is always a little bit too big and the hole is always a little bit too small, but you have a very narrow process. Um, how would you then define the defect rate? The model built by R&D actually can't account for this. So now you have violated the assumptions made by R&D and you no longer have the ability to predict the product failure rate. Um, and more importantly, you don't have any way of feeding back the data into the system because the analysis set up by R&D can't really account for something being offset. Everything has to be on target. Um, so this makes it really hard to have a common language and if you don't have a common language, you don't, you're losing communication and you lose the ability to learn and improve on your product. So if specifications do not reflect R&D assumptions, there is a real risk that your product will not behave the way you predicted it to once it hits the market. And just a side note here is that, well, using CPK is an ambiguous measure, so you need something to tell you, or at least have a model that can account for how well did I center my process. So this is where the CC index come into play, and you can come and ask us about that afterwards. Summing up, using easy to access, flexible software, allows you to have fast startup. This is gonna ensure you have fast results. Management is gonna be on board. They can see the results fast. Easily adaptable enables you to have the same tool used for many different problem types, uh, fitting your specific need. Building a realistic model is important if you want to differentiate between long-term, short-term, OQ, PQ, or just account for, for something that is changing in your inputs. Um, and you want to make sure that you can set enforceable input assumptions because enforceable input assumptions is the key to having a reliable prediction of your product failure rate. So being able to handle something that might shift, mean values might shift. Um, and then you want to be able to feedback data from the pilot. So this is really very tightly linked to having enforceable input assumptions, but having the ability to feedback data from pilot allows you to learn from it and to more realistically set your demands for your, uh, for your product so that it will actually reflect your performance instead of just being reflecting the uh, R&D assumptions. Okay. I think uh, that was pretty much it. Much it. Am I a little bit over time? No, I think that's, uh, that's just fine. Uh, some quick questions here before we move on. Yeah. Uh, you used the term failure rate several times. Yeah. Sure, defect rate. Let's call it defect rate. Somewhere. But we have a booth outside, so exactly. We ask I, I think we have questions. some 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 time some time later to uh, to get more into detail yeah. and uh, yeah, Tom is going to be available the whole day, I guess, yeah. oh. if you have any questions. Along with my colleague. So okay. Yeah, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting talk. Thank you. And uh, yeah, this is for you. Thank you. All right, uh, coming up next um, on the program is the, the computer-aided uh, robust design session, back-to-back uh, -back actually with the, with the poster session. It has kind of the same format, just uh, really briefly how it works. Um, the idea is to, for the card session first, um, to, yeah, to see what, what kind of card uh, possibilities are actually there so we invited four card vendors, um, uh, very different ones, so dealing with tolerance uh, management, uh, GPS, uh, optimization, and uh, reliability. I think they, they're going to introduce themselves in a little bit. Um, and then afterwards, we have uh, five poster presentations, and uh, the format is as follows. So uh, we're going to group again in uh, five groups. So as yesterday, you have the, the color on your name tags, so I would like to... Uh, to meet your group at uh, the stand outside that has the, the colored dot uh, associated to it. And then we'll have, um, so we're a little bit over time already, but we have uh, uh, five stations, uh, five card vendors um, that will 
each do a 15-minute presentation of their software, and then we have one stand for NNE Pharma Plan, and there will be a, a card and RD methods, uh, method uh, survey. But we have a student there doing, uh, doing the intro to that. Uh, then we'll have the 15-minute break, uh, followed by uh, the poster session. So that's uh, also going to be then five times uh, five minutes uh, presentation of the posters. And at the end, we'll, we'll have a, a longer time where people can just gather around where they think it's interesting and ask questions to uh, either the poster or the card vendors. Yeah, finally, before lunch, uh, we will uh, close uh, the, the morning session uh, with uh, Matthias Ehlert uh, from BMW giving a keynote speech. And uh, yeah, so we have, uh, we're in M1 right now here, and then we have uh, these assigned groups and then after the time, we will uh, give a signal, and then we will uh, go clockwise, but that will be organized, so don't worry about it. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, I, th I think it's, it's good that everyone uh, gets, gets the chance to uh, have a, a little bit a, pri a private talk uh, in smaller groups. I don't think it makes much sense if there are 60 people also standing in, uh, in front of the posters. So that's, that's the format that we came up with. All right. I would uh, like you to go out and, and meet your group um, at uh, at the station. Thanks.